Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys the new Blender 3.1.2 interface, which is a lot like the uh, 3.0. Not a lot of changes, but I, I wanna do go over them in case this is the first time you open up Blender and you're overwhelmed at everything that's going on. We're gonna break it down here for a minute and I'm gonna show you all the different aspects of the interface so that we can get started working in 3D. So the first thing you'll see when you open up Blender is this splash screen and you can see that I'm working in 3.1.2. I just downloaded this and it gives you options as to what you want to do, right? Uh, whether you wanna open up um, a general file, a 2D file, sculpting, VFX, video editing, any of this stuff, or open a, an existing Blender file. And if you just click anywhere, this will go away. If you need it back, um, you can get it here, splash screen, there it is. So when you open up, you get the splash screen. Click anywhere to get rid of it. Uh, and this is your typical 3D scene. It comes with one light, one cube, and one camera. And you will see those objects here. This is called the outliner. And it's called an outliner because it's in the form of an outline. It's got the collection, uh, which is a series, just a collection of objects. But it's got one camera, one cube, and one light. And you can select them here as well. You can select them by clicking on them and you can also select them here in the outliner. It's a very handy thing to have is the outliner and you can see the cubes data properties. You can select them here and it'll come up here. This is the properties panel and that there's all sorts of properties depending on what um, you have selected. You will see these properties change here. So for example, if you click on the light, you'll get the light properties and you get to see the light properties. If you click on the camera, you see the camera properties. I think the first one, two, three, four, five, six will be pertaining to the scene. And the last, after the collections, the last ones will be pertaining to the object that you have selected. If I have the cube selected, you can go to the cube properties uh, the modifiers uh, and so on and so forth. There's a lot, and, but the object properties are right there. The materials properties are right there. And so we'll go over those a little bit more as we work on a scene. Up here is the menu, the main menu, but the main menu only is the file, edit, render, and window, and even the help. After the help, these are workspaces. Right now we are in the layout workspace and the layout workspace is the default 3D scene layout space. But we have one for modeling, which looks very, very similar to the layout, except there is no timeline. And you get some extra tools here for working in the modeling. Sculpting, of course you get the sculpting tools and you get a sculpting interface. You don't need the timeline. You Everything is arranged to optimize your work experience. You've got the UV editing, um, texture paint, shading, when you're doing the shading. Uh, animation, of course, it's got the timeline, you've got the camera view and you've got your workspace, rendering, compositing, uh, geometry notes and scripting, even scripting when you want to write scripts. We're gonna default to the layout. That's the default scene. And so we're gonna stay here in the layout uh, workspace. Underneath the main menu is the header. This is where you get to pick which work mode you're working with. For example, I have this cube selected. I am in object mode. That means that I can edit the whole object by let's say moving it, rotating it or, or whatever. I'm gonna undo that. Edit mode goes into the object and now we can edit for example, the vertices. We can also edit edges, for example, this edge, and we can also edit faces, for example, this face. And so these are the um, editing work modes. We could go to sculpt mode, we could go to vertex paint, weight paint, or texture paint. These are the work modes. Now this is depending on, let me go back to object mode. 
the object. This is dependent on the object that you have selected. For example, if I click on the camera, I'm not going to have all these options. The camera, you can only work in object mode. Um, the, the light, if I click on the light, you can only work in object mode. So it's only when you have a mesh, uh, an object that you can go and have all these other work modes. We've got the view where you, depending on the, what view you want, selection, you can select objects, all or none, or invert to selection. Um, add, the add menu is very important. This is where you get to add objects into your scene. For example, the monkey. I'm gonna move this cube back, but here is the monkey that we can see here and we just added it by going to the add menu going to mesh and adding that monkey now we can add curves surfaces meta balls text volumes a grease pencil object a grease pencil object is for 2d animation i've got some videos going over the grease pencil stuff but um, we can also add armatures lattices and empty add images lights this is where we can add lights light probe cameras speakers, force fields, and collection instances. And then finally, object. What do you want to do with this object? This object menu is for that. If you want to transform, in other words, move, rotate, scale. If you want to set the origin, mirror, clear it, apply, snap, all this stuff. Moving on uh, to the right, this is the axis, the global axis. It could have a local axis. It could have a normal, based on the normal, gimbal, view, or, or a cursor, the 3D cursor. But global is the global axis, the global coordinates. This is the uh, pivot point. Uh, where do you want this thing to pivot from? The bounding box center, the 3D cursor, individual origins, medium point, or active. We'll go over some of this stuff uh, later. I'm just showing you what's here guys this is the snap to and this is the proportional editing moving along uh, this is some of the stuff that you see on the viewport for example this is the gizmos if you want to see them or not maybe you want to see them or you could turn them all off at once for example the grid or all on and the grid is right here the floor the scale of the grid and all this stuff is here we'll go over some of it when we get to it these are the previews we've got x-ray mode which allows you to see through the object we've got wireframe which you can see the wireframe we've got shaded preview I'm gonna take off the wireframe shaded preview material preview and then rendered preview. The rendered preview takes into effect the light. No other preview takes into effect the light. These controls here control the view. For example, this one is a rotation. If I wanna rotate the view, all I need to do is click and hold and, and move the mouse to rotate the scene. If I click on a specific letter, an axis, for example, the Z axis, I'll go to my top view, I'll go to my side view, and I'll go to my front view. In that case, the back or the front. But if I just click and drag, I can rotate the view. Also, the zoom, if I click and drag up and down, it'll zoom in and out. If I click the hand and drag, I'm gonna click and drag, um, it'll move, not rotate, move the view. And if I click on the camera, it'll go to the camera view. There it is. In any view I am, for example, if, I, if I'm over here somewhere and I click the camera view, it'll go to the camera view. Uh, this other thing is for, let me turn it this way so you can see. So the camera is a perspective camera, but if you wanna see isometric, there is no perspective in this view. It's isometric. There is no perspective. So uh, perspective or isometric. And this is the toolbox. We've got the selection, uh, box selection. We've got the 3D cursor. 
We've got the Move tool, the Rotate tool, Scale tool, and the Multi Transform tool. This is, uh, if you click on this, you'll see the Move tool. We can move this object in any axis. We can rotate this object in any axis. Undo that. We can scale this um, object in any axis. Command Z and in all, every axis. But this tool, the transform tool, you can do everything at once. I can scale it, I can move it, I can rotate it, I can do any, all of the three with this tool. And then the annotate tool, uh, you can just write down some notes. Uh, the measurement tool, you can measure these uh, for example, let's say I want to measure, I just click and drag from here to here, and that is 1.4 meters. It's right there. Uh, and then, of course, the this is called the interactive add um, tool. So we're going to add a cube. You see this round little grid uh, in my cursor, and that means I'm going to create something, a cube, and it's looking for a grid. Uh, so I'm gonna create it here and I'm going, just going to drag out a cube, a square, let go, and then the second click would be the height. And there it is. I could, this is cool because I can create a cube right here, right on this surface, boom, right there. Very, very uh, useful. And so uh, at the bottom, we've got the timeline We've got the create automatic key button, auto key, the play buttons, the start and end frames, and even another menu for the timeline. Uh, we can add markers for the timeline. And that's basically it, guys. That's the interface. But what I'm gonna show you is how to split up your viewport. Uh, now, again, this is the properties box and this is the outliner. Uh, I come from using Maya, so I am used to looking at the quad view. Control option Q gives you a quad view. And you can, you can see that this is the perspective window and this is the top view, front view, and side view. And to get back is control option Q again. Control Option Q for the quad view and out. Uh, the cool thing about Blender is that you can split these windows up any way you want. For example, if I put my mouse over this corner, you'll see that little crosshairs, that little cross. And if I click and drag, I will drag out another view. And I could do this as many times as I want. as many times as I want. Now, to delete one of these views, all I have to do instead of dragging in, instead of dragging in to add a view, you drag out of the window and it will, it will um, delete either the bottom one or the top one. And so, for instance, I wanna get rid of this one, I will put my, um, cursor right there. If I drag in, I'm creating a window. I'm going to put the cursor here, but if I drag out, I delete it. So I'm going to drag out and I'm going to drag outside the window and outside this window. That means that I'm going to keep this one and lose the one on the right. Boom. There it is. That's basically it for the interface. Uh, you saw me rotating the scene without going over here. The keyboard shortcut to rotate the scene is the middle mouse button. If you hit the middle mouse button, you can rotate the scene. Shift middle mouse button. You can move the scene. This is pan. And control middle mouse button. You can zoom in and out. These are the same functions that you get here. If you click here and you rotate the scene, you can click here and drag to zoom in and out. And you can 
click here and drag to move or pan the scene. Same here, except for the keyboard shortcut is just the middle mouse button, shift middle mouse button, and control middle mouse button. And that's it guys, that's all I wanted to show you, a brief overview of the interface. In the next video, we'll probably go over on how to manipulate objects and how to create objects. Hey guys, um, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Thank you guys.